Hey, it's Shane. Today, I'm going to talk about a brand new project that we're working on. And this is something that we're going to build with you. You know, typically when we make a product, we kind of build it and then we launch it and tell you about it. But we wanted to give you guys a behind the scenes tour of what it takes to launch a new product. And so this video, we're going to talk a bit about the new product. And then the second half will be a status update where we're at with it, how it works, and what our next steps are. And we're gonna try to keep you guys updated pretty regularly. And that'll be through obviously videos on YouTube, but also through like shorts and reels. There'll be kind of uh, shorter uh, updates along the way, punctuated with these a bit more substantive updates. But we are excited because we are making our first adjustable DE razor. And this is something that we've been working on for quite a while, I've actually had designs at various stages of completion for you know a year and a half or two years but we weren't really in position to make it now we are working with tyler at kinetic cnc to engineer and take it from the 90 percent ish that i had it at to 100 percent and then obviously he will be doing our prototyping and eventually our manufacturing and before we really jump into this i want to give answers to a few questions that are bound to come. Uh, first, we don't have a launch date. We're just gonna, if you follow along the series, you'll know when it's gonna launch because you'll see it as it gets progressively closer. But we're not gonna give you an ETA. Um, I don't really know when it's gonna be done. We have really strong start and we have a lot of progress, but we still have a ways to go. And this is a part of production where we always run into roadblocks, things can happen. And I just don't want to give you a timeline because it'll be misleading. So no timeline. Second question is uh, no price yet. That will also be determined as we get closer. And uh, as you'll find, this whole series is not going to be a lot of uh, answers today. You'll get those answers as we go because you're going to be building it with us. And we're going to give you the behind the scenes of how we make those decisions. Um, we don't have a name for this product yet and the design is not finalized. So we're working on some of the aesthetics and uh, we still have a ways to go. So those kinds of questions about when you can purchase it, how much you'll be able to purchase for, just follow along over the next several weeks and those answers will become clear as they become clear to us. Um, I can tell you though that this adjustable DE is a three-piece setup and we wanted to make it the adjustable mechanism in the smallest form factor possible and I will show you that at, towards the end of this video. This is gonna be made in stainless steel and titanium. There is a, um, you know, that's all subject to change. We're at that stage where things can really be different from where we launch now and where they go. Um, but we're excited for you guys to follow along with this video and with this video series. So if you like this and you wanna see where this goes, and uh, you also want your voice heard because we're gonna be listening to your feedback, seeing your comments, and if you like that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe to this so you can keep updated as we go. And I'm um, looking forward to the next, you know, probably several weeks, maybe a few months. Who knows how long it'll take. And uh, there's always that possibility that the project fails. And we'll show you that too. Um, we'll show you, you know, if it doesn't work out, we'll tell you why. And we're going to show you the, the good, the bad, and we'll just keep you updated as we make these uh, progressions over time. So... With that being said, I'm excited to have you guys uh, part of this journey and uh, let's show you the new adjustable DE. All right, so here is our alpha prototype. This is V1, if you will, of our metal prototypes at least. So first thing you'll notice, I mean, we'll just hit it off the bat, is we don't have the handle yet. Um, that design is being fleshed out right now. We're working really on the mechanism at this stage. This is just a regular three-piece razor. This is the base plate. It's all contained. We can put the top cap down and you'll see that this thing does not come apart. It's all one piece. The knob and base plate are all solid. One thing, I'll show you how that works in a second. The top cap, just a regular top cap. The goal for this project was to create a three piece adjustable where the adjustment is all in the base plate. We can make it as compact as possible as simple as possible, and you can use different handles if you want. Uh, most adjustable razors, the handle is an integral part of the adjustment mechanism. Usually that's where all the spring is located, the adjustment mechanism itself, and uh, we invented a way to get around that. Right now, the uh, razor is set at its lowest setting. 
So this would be setting you know, zero. We're not sure exactly how many settings there will be. You'll notice on the knob that there is no uh, indicator yet. And then we simply crank it up. And now it's at its highest setting. One issue with DE, or sorry, with adjustable razors typically is that even though they're adjustable, they usually fall on either the mild or aggressive side of the spectrum across the entire shave setting. So often people who want a really mild razor um, will find an adjustable and say, hey, I, even on setting one, I really can't use it. And sometimes people who want a more efficient shave will use something like a Gillette Slim vintage razor. And uh, they'll find that you know even on the highest setting, which I think for that razor is a nine, it's just not enough. And we're trying to solve that here. The other goal is to make a razor that is simple. So this has relatively few parts compared to the average adjustable razor. Internally, and I'll show you some uh, CAD models probably around here in the video. Internally, there is some cleverness going on. So we have in here, there is this really cool spring. It's called a wave spring and it's super compact, much more compact than the, the traditional spring that you think of when you think of a spring. And that spring is what is allowing the adjustment to work. And the real magic is that this knob and what we call the top plate, this place, this piece here where the blade will sit is these are actually bound by a, um, a retaining device inside the top plate. And so the knob pops into that basically and uh, allows the knob to rotate, but not pull away from the top plate. So you have rotational motion, but the linear motion is, is restricted. So then the base plate here in the center, the bottom plate as we call it, is bound between those and it is threaded to correspond to the threads in the knob so that when you turn the knob, the threads drive that bottom plate up or down. And uh, it works quite well. The knurling here is just kind of ugly and pointless and we're gonna make that something cooler. That's just a placeholder so we can grip the thing and make sure it works. Um, the idea is that this little arrow will be your indicator. And so we on the knob will have uh, adjustment markings, you know, level one, level two, etc. On the reverse, uh, there will be a black lamb um, script there, or perhaps the name of the product, which is TBD. Now I actually shaved with this thing uh, yesterday and actually also today. And uh, I have some, you know, some feedback that we're gonna work on. Right now, actually, let's leave that off. Right now, one of the issues we have is a little bit of wobble. You can see this here. Now, when you have the top cap on, there will always be a little bit of wobble when it's not assembled. With the top cap on, that wobble goes away, mostly, because the top cap is now restricting the movement of that top plate. Um, but you still get a little bit in the base plate here. The good news is that this doesn't impact shave, but it's not ideal because, you know, theoretically it could impact the shave. Like maybe you kind of push up with your thumb while you're shaving. So that is one of the things that we're going to work on. And we have some ideas for that. Um, basically it's just tightening everything up. Next functional item I want to change is this sucker is a bit too heavy. You know, nowadays razors, um, are getting lighter and they should. The days of like the huge heavy Thor's hammer thing, those are kind of going away and I don't want this thing to be a sledgehammer. We want it to be a accurate maneuverable tool. Mostly the top cap isn't gonna change too much. We might make it cooler. It's a little simple right now. And uh, there'll be some details that might change on it. But overall, the top cap's pretty good. This is where the bulk of the material lies for this part. And so we're going to just hack out a lot of this. We're also gonna make this thing a little bit narrower than it currently is. It's currently a little wider than it needs to be. The handle will be appropriately weighted to balance the head. So we're trying to make the head um, not, you know, ultra lightweight. That'll be the titanium version. We're trying to make this just really similar to a, a regular DE, like something like the Blackbird is kind of our target weight. I am really proud of this mechanism. No one's ever done anything quite like this. This is a Blackland innovation and something that I'm really proud of and something that I think is uh, just really, really freaking cool. So let's talk challenges. You know, we have a long way to go in this product. We have all of the naming, marketing, marketing, um, financial stuff. 
to go, but we also have production headwinds too. So we have to figure out some of the uh, engineering fixes I talked about to make the top cap a bit more stable or the top plate on the base plate a bit more stable rather, get rid of that little bit of wiggle that I showed you. And we need to cut weight. This thing has to get slim, it's gotta get agile. We have to figure out how to do that. The next thing we have to do is the handle. And the handle is a bit of a challenge from a production standpoint because we're actually still waiting on getting the proper machine for it. So this needs a, um, basically what's called like a mill turn, um, but it's a combination of a lathe and a CNC milling tool. So you can spin parts that are cylindrical and then actually drop down and, and CNC machine them like you would think of the way we make our heads. Do we need that? <laughs> We're working on acquiring that and uh, that might be our limiting factor for, uh, for the speed of produ producing that. And also we don't have the design set. So we're trying to make something really unique for the handle. And that's actually really tough. Handle design is a complete pain. It's really, it's really challenging. And we try to do it at the same time. So we have some designs we're working on and uh, working with the head design. The other uh, headwinds will just be regular stuff. Um, we don't know how to, how much it'll cost. So we're trying to really figure that out. Um, we want this to be a reasonably priced item. You know, reasonable gets insane. We're talking about the kind of products we make. Um, I don't know if any of our razors are, you know, reasonably priced, but they are a reasonable value. You know, the work and quality we put into them is commensurate with the price we charge for them. And that's what we're looking for here. I don't want to make the, at least the stainless steel version. I don't want that to be a $400 razor. That's insane. Um, we reduce the part count to keep that cost pretty reasonable, but we still have to finalize it. Um, we'll have a titanium version, very excited about that. So we still need to prototype that. Um, a lot of people think that making something in different materials is as simple as putting a different material in the machine, but it actually requires completely different programming, um, different tools you actually use. We have to acquire those tools. Sometimes it can take different work holding and different, um, you know, setup. I don't think that's gonna be the case here largely, but that's where we're at. The good news is that we have the head is pretty well dialed in. We're probably like, you know, 80, 90% of the way there on the head. It has all of the programming set up and we have fixturing figured out and we know how we're gonna make it. We don't yet know what finishes it will be available in. Are we gonna go with a machine finish? Are we gonna blast them? Are we going to offer them polished? Um, we have all these decisions to make and we're gonna make them with you as we go forward. So you're welcome to weigh in with your thoughts below. Um, you know, we might, listen <laughs> part of this is to make sure that we are engaged with you guys and you're part of the process this isn't a democratic vote you know um ultimately we have to make the designs that we think are best and that represent our brand and will be a great tool for you but we'd love to hear from you and uh, your feedback would be helpful as we go along uh, but i want to make sure you guys follow along with this journey it should be a lot of fun i think we'll have this available in the next few months um and I can't wait to show you each step along the way. It's gonna be cool to show you behind the scenes how we do things. And uh, I hope you subscribe, follow along, shoot us an email, leave a comment, do all the stuff you know how to do. And we will see you soon for the next update.